Anastasio is nothing if not exciting. He's a firecracker. I, I really never know what to expect from him when he comes out on the mat, which is exciting. <laughs> it's fun to watch. So I think this is going to be a match of who sets the pace, and then it's going to get rolling from there. And I think that whoever sets the pace first is going to stay in control the entire fight, if I had to guess. No surprise to see Espen leap in the guard position here. I see how Portazio handles a dangerous Norwegian's bottom game. Yeah, it was really well-timed guard pull, obviously, when you have a classic guard player versus top player. It's always a, a wonder who might look for the, the two points, who might look for the guard, the well the well-timed guard pull. So we saw uh, Portazio almost reach for the legs, hoping for a two, maybe, right? You got to hope for that when you're someone who wants to play on top if you know you're not going to be able to grip up for the points for the two. But no points were awarded. It was well-timed, and now we're right into a... Uh, a nice little, like, double shallow lasso here from Espen. Now into collar sleeve. I like Espen's use of the collar and sleeve to pull into more of a, almost like he was looking for a closed guard position. So he does a really great job of transitioning between guards really smoothly instead of insisting on staying in one place. Makes him so versatile, and his guard retention just off the chain as a result. In transition. There we see like a double shallow lasso to a collar sleeve to a guard pull. It's almost like a little triangle attempt. So same sequence again. You read my mind there. As <laughs> Espen showed, just a little bit of a triangle attack. Withdrew quickly back to this double lasso. Definitely aware of Portazio's aggressive passing style. This is a great way, as we saw earlier in the day, to slow somebody down. A referee noting such, awarding penalties to both athletes. They want to see a bit more action out here. I like that. That's a, that's a quick call, and I think it may, it may get things moving here. Yeah, I agree. That was quicker than norm. That was quicker than than sometimes we see, and I, and I like that though. It pushes the pace and forces the athletes to realize they need to get the action going, and people start making some mistakes, start opening up, and already we see a big change in pace here. Now with Espen swimming underneath, almost all the way up to the back already. Great bolo from Espen Matisse in there, but Portazio squirms out of danger for the mean part, but there are two points that West awarded to Espen. That was a great look at the back, Kendall. Yeah, that was. I thought it was going to get to the back there. Instead, opted to come up for almost like a leg drag position. Ends up in single leg X instead. So still a great position uh, for Patazio to, to start to score and attack from, but did concede the two points. We spoke with Espen earlier this week, and he said it would be a monumental feat for him to win a gold medal at the European Championships. Of course, that would join the ranks with his teammate Tommy Langacker, but he's gonna have to get through Lucas Portazio first, who ties up the score there at that sweep two to two. Yeah, beautiful X guard sweep to come up and answer back to the top position, evening the score out. With still seven minutes left to go, plenty of time for these athletes to work with the score even. However, in a game with sweep or sweep, I would not want to be facing Espen Matiasen. He's got a phenomenal guard, and he's already, as you mentioned, Kendall, set the pacing so far in this match. Let's see if he can maintain that throughout. Yeah, and it almost looked like, you know, Espen was was happy to go back to the bottom position. It looked like he might have shot up a triangle attempt a little bit on that X-guard sweep. Definitely not mad about being on the bottom and hunting that triangle again. But Portazio doing a great job of keeping his right knee in the middle, preventing Espen's hips from elevating up enough to get that triangle locked, keeping him just out of danger. Yeah, it's not many people that are so comfortable leaving one arm in and one arm out the way that Portazio is, but so confident in keeping his arms in that position with his right knee in the middle to prevent the triangle. And now we see a nice knee bar entry here from Espen. Leg was locked out for just a moment, but now switches to the back attack instead. Looks to come up on top. Won't quite get the top position, but does score an advantage for his beautiful attempt there at the knee and towards the back. This is exactly the kind of match we expected here. Portazio opening up a little bit with those pass attempts, but Espen also firing off with a great, great look at the back. Wonderful exchange between a top and bottom player, Kendall. Well, and this is exactly where Espen wants to be. This is his preferred position. He's in the bottom, he's playing guard, but now he's winning by the advantage. So the pressure is off, right? Now he's up, he's on bottom exactly where he needs to be. So 
the tides kind of switch a little bit, and now Pertazio really needs to pour on the pressure to start to get something moving. At least to put an advantage on the board, even out the score. About halfway through the match here, five minutes in. And with a similar style again from Pertazio with underhooking the leg with the right hand, most people do not hang out with one arm in, one out, one arm out of the guard. Right, but with that right knee, he feels pretty safe. I do think this is a little bit of a smarter approach and Protasio starts to stand up because he's not able to get any of that explosive movement that he needs to have to pass from his knees. But of course, when he stands up, there's a lot more sweep opportunity and knee bar maybe potentially again too. Has been threatening briefly that dangerous De La Hiva guard that he has. Portazio doing his best to shut that down, putting his thigh right against the back of his shin on his calf, closing the space. But Espen insists, goes back to the De La Hiva. Great off balancing there. Great use of the collar, yeah, to off balance as he spun through. Wow, nice control of the hips here. Look at the scrambling ability of Protasio to avoid the back take. Yeah, incredible awareness from Protasio. Came up almost in a passing position of his own, but if nothing else, definitely got itself out of danger. No score on the board from that, from that exchange. Has an interesting footlock grip with his right hand, I, I believe. Wow, beautiful. Stepping over and jumping over, but does have a little bit of a danger here with his right arm, potentially on Oma Plata. Portazio doing his best to try and reverse the fortunes here. Espen getting some great looks, but the scrambling ability, the kind of wild card nature of his game, opening opportunities where many would fall to, to a loss. Yeah, it's really beautiful to see their awareness and the, the muscle memory they both have. They're not spending time thinking about these exchanges. Their bodies just know what to do automatically, which is what we see with such high-level players. A lot of steps that we don't even see are going on. They're happening. It is the challenge here with a passer like Protasio. He needs to stand up and get some sort of disconnection in order to get his dynamic passing going. But as soon as he stands up, then we see Aspen's attack start firing off because there's more openings in the legs, there's more opening to spin underneath, the hips are exposed. So the challenge for Protasio is like, if he stays on his knees and he stays hunched down, he shuts down the attacks, but he can't get his movement going to pass. So he's a little bit, uh, gets a little frustrating here. Especially with that lasso position, we see that issue. Interesting, almost opting to lay on his stomach. Very uh, unique passing position from Patazio on top. Maybe not a passing, but a, more of a defense that's just not going to get swept. The total sprawl, yeah. Definitely yeah. not a forward movement, but prevents some danger there. But he's back on his feet here, looking to make something happen. He knows he's down with just under two minutes left. All he needs is an advantage to tie things up. But I would say Espen thus far has mostly dictated the pace with Portazio doing his best to counter. Just under two minutes left here. One, forty-eight. We're gonna reset to the center. And then we're gonna see some big, big movement here from Portazio because he knows he needs it. But that's where Aspen thrives. When the big movement starts to happen, the openings start to happen, Aspen maintains control. That's what we've seen so far in some of those explosive attempts. Beautiful scrambles and movement from both athletes, but Aspen just a little bit ahead. Now we see a little bit of a better position here, potentially with Potasio out, outside of those lasso positions, but a beautiful De La Hiva from Espen. Great control. Almost a toehold attempt there from Potasio looking back on that leg, but the right hand on the collar from Espen 
has done such a great job at dictating the posture, another told attempt, but exposes the back in the process. Oh, Espin's trapped an arm there, maybe looking to come up on top. Potentially a triangle attack. Portazio doing what he could to try and score that advantage, but definitely exposing himself slightly as Espin makes the most of this. Yeah, we see some last ditch energy here, and you do run the risk, and another advantage will be scored for Espin. Portazio, though, pouring on the pressure here with less than 30 seconds. But the guard has been so nimble, so tactical. Tazio has no way through. Like we were saying earlier, just the awareness. He has an answer for every every movement from Portazio. But this is a little bit better than we've seen so far. With just five seconds left, it won't be enough to score to get the win. What a battle. Really great stuff from both athletes there. Espen taking the win there on two advantages. Moving on to the semifinals with Marcio Andre. A lightweight division here at the Europeans. We're going to stick around on mat one. We've got Eduardo Harkey taking on Sam McNally next in a featherweight quarterweight quarterfinal. Be right back.